Well, it's certainly exciting to be here at the Energy NL Conference in historic downtown St. John's, Newfoundland, where Gale Force wins. I'm Alan Dale. With me, as always, my good buddy, Jerry Crew. And I want to tell you, there's a lot of exciting things happening in this sector right now. David, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself? Well, thank you, Alan, for, uh, for inviting me. And good to see you again, Jerry. Well, I'm excited because a uh, fellow trumpet player is now on the podcast, Alan. Well, that's great. That's what we were waiting for. Well, I'm used to being in the second chair, but being first here is uh, <laughs> different for a trumpeter. So uh, my name is David Robbins. I'm a uh, biologist by academic background and been involved in environmental science for, dare I say, three decades. And I've uh, been involved with almost every major play in Newfoundland, uh, big developments, and uh, really excited to see uh, the transition to uh, uh, renewable energy. You know, I'm a big believer that uh, we need all forms of energy, but this is exciting to see uh, the world in Newfoundland starting to move towards uh, uh, greener fuels. Very exciting. Yeah, all, all forms of energy are certainly required, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, But this renewable thing that's happening in Newfoundland right now, quite a buzz. Mm -hmm. Tell me about your feeling on that. What do you, what do you think? Well, I come from a, a background in uh, hydroelectric background. Did a lot of work for uh, Newfoundland Hydro, Nalcor, and uh, hydroelectric right across the province and in Labrador. And uh, you know they're beautiful projects. They're uh, they operate in the perpetuity. They offer uh, really attractive, uh, low carbon, long term power. So they're extremely attractive. But those opportunities are few and far between because they're obviously related to uh, uh, hydro flow. With the wind and green energy and the opportunity to go maybe to hydrogen, maybe to ammonia. Who knows where the the ultimate fuels are going to be, it's a, another perpetual style project. So once we develop uh, wind farms, then they can operate for decades and decades and provide uh, renewable power that you can plan on uh, to use for, uh, for other industries. Extremely exciting and uh, long term. And, and creating a lot of opportunity for the communities that they're going in and broadly Newfoundland, right? Yeah. They, um, you know, these are mechanical systems, so there's uh, lots of opportunities for, for jobs to service them and the planning for them. And uh, so, yeah, there's going to be a lot of employment associated with the wind projects. That's pretty impressive. So uh, tell me what you do now or what are you involved in specifically? So uh, being an environmental scientist, I'm with uh, ICI Innovations. We're a digital company, but we provide strategic environmental advice and strategic uh, data management, environmental data management, and it's uh, we have a motto, it's uh, achieving uh, more with your information. So allowing you to get access to your data and use it for your planning tools, be that engineering or environmental. So I'll just give you a couple examples. We have um, one client in the States operates a port. This is a maritime exchange, and they use uh, all of the vessel data to where we collect it, we put it on their site for them, and they use it to manage the cargo loads that are coming on, and their members can access that data and service and plan to service those vessels coming to port. Where's that port located? It's in Delaware. Interesting. Yeah, yeah. Great client of ours. And then locally, uh, closer to home, uh, we work with Oilco uh, uh, with their Insight uh, software that uh, we're the backbone for them for. The, a lot of the offshore bids to analyze the weather data, seismic data, so in allowing firms to make informed decisions on what lands are going to bid. And then really close to home, we're involved with uh, Everwind Fuels, a uh, great company, and they recently bought Point Tupper and now they're looking to develop a wind farm here in Newfoundland. And we're helping them manage their data, so getting the most out of the public data and their data that they're collecting, be that for where do we put uh, potential uh, meteorological towers uh, that avoid sensitive areas or where people uh, uh, traverse and use the recreational trails? How do we plan for that so that that's built into our planning so that we can work cooperatively with communities? And that's so, interesting because I guess you have to find the, the most, the highest wind speeds and, and mitigate all of those the right. data points. Well, that's a, that's a, it's not just simply putting data up, it's looking at correlations, it's yeah. looking at analytics. So you take uh, a potential uh, wind sighting 
Uh, you need to look at high winds first, then you need to look at topography, you need to look at access, yeah. then you need to look at uh, use constraints, watersheds, water supplies, where do people hunt and fish, uh, birds, uh, fauna, avifauna, all those things had to be considered. So it's a very complex, um, let's call it a marriage or relationship between the constraints and your valuable uh, uh, data or assets that you need to, to make this uh, still a feasible initiative. That's interesting. Yeah. yeah, when you have that much data circulating around and those many things, that are those multitude of things to consider, you, you need a very special tool to help you make those decisions, right? right. And that's where you guys come in. Right, and it's uh, the interesting thing, another aspect of it, is that it's usable. So you can be the CEO, you can be a project engineer, you can be contractors. Uh, we use, everybody on our team has access to this tool, so you can be in Australia or Germany or New York and access your data and query your data and see what other people are working on and what products they've produced. And as your contractors put their data into the system, then it's viewable from your, uh, your entire team. That's incredible, right? Handing, yeah. the, handing the tools down as far as you can get exactly. them so that you can make the decisions down as low as you possibly can. Exactly. And that makes things a lot more agile, doesn't it? You know, you said it, Alan, agile. Yeah. So these uh, timing's important, speed, and accuracy. Yeah. So how do you get, you know, if you have a group that's collecting data, how do you get that to your engineers? How do you get that to your scientists? How do you get that out to the people you, stakeholders you want to engage with as your project is evolving, as you're bidding for lands? Yeah. You have to be nimble, you have to be agile. You need a system that everybody's using with data that's accessible. That's what we do. I can tell you, I, mean, I can sense the excitement in your voice when you talk about data in this way, and it's cool, right? Yeah, and it, it is, and it's also cool when a client embraces it right. and says, yeah, we're gonna, we see the potential, uh, we see the value, uh, we're excited, and we're, uh, we're striving for the same thing. So let me ask one more geeky question. When okay. it comes to the data and the representation of it, is it all graphs and bar charts, or do you have some pretty neat, like, graphical representations of these We do. Data. Well, it's also a data management tool. So, so we're down collecting uh, pictures and videos and uh, drone footage. You can access, you access your database from our, uh, our site. You almost so, sound like an artist when you're doing this stuff. Well, if you're there and you're saying, okay, we're, we're looking at changing or modifying the site, you can pull up the drone footage and uh, view it and then say, okay, we want to look at some of the geotechnics, or, and then you can pull up that data from a different contractor and show mm. it at the same time. Is it complicated so. to integrate some of that data, like from the different sensors and stuff like that? It is, it's yeah. not, uh, it's, uh, yeah, the algorithms and the backbone of it is quite, yeah. quite detailed. Corey Tucker is our president. Corey and uh, Colin Taylor are the uh, people who came up with the idea and the brainchild behind Right here this. in Newfoundland. Right here in Newfoundland. Well, they have an engineering background? And geography, GIS, geography, uh, science, and uh, we have clients all over North America. And uh, yeah, we're really excited. My undergraduate degree is in geography. Then I did business. <laughs> I did economic <laughs> geography. There you go. I thought you were a musician. I you did. <laughs> well, amateur, as you know. <laughs> well, that's a very well, good. you're a good trumpeter. Yeah. There you go. Thank you. Are Thank you guys you finished did. talking about trumpeting? Can we get back to <laughs> No, no, let's do a podcast on trumpets. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's fantastic. It really does sound like an amazing offering and uh, quite, a, quite a tool for this industry to kind of lean into. So glad that you're at the show. What are you most excited about to pull out of this show here over the next couple of days? Well, I, I still uh, very excited by the uh, oil industry. So I'm excited to see some of my uh, friends at Equinor and Exxon and the consultants that are servicing those beautiful projects. Uh, but I'm really interested in see how the companies are changing as green energy and, and wind energy uh, uh, comes to the forefront. See how the contractors and consultants and the uh, producers even start to embrace this uh, new force. And I wouldn't call it gale force, but I'd call it a new force and see, see how we come together to uh, welcome uh, the uh, new industry that's evolving. Well, I have to tell you, this was a wonderful conversation here today. Yeah. And thanks very much for providing us some insight into that incredible tool that was created right here. What is the name of the tool? 
The tool is ReportViz, okay. and the company is ICI. Okay, thanks for ta explaining ReportViz. There'll be a lot of people out there very interested in having, yeah. no, having known about that, but what a great story and what a what a, a tool for this industry to use, and I'm yeah. sure it has application across other industries as well, right? Well, we use it for you know ports and winds and the Impact Assessment Agency did their regional assessment using our tool. So right. it's, it's applicable for impact assessments, engineering planning, and all sorts of industries. And it's nice to put a face to a name because I watch you guys and you're traveling the globe. Yeah. And I saw you, but I've never met you before. Of course, Jerry, I've known for ages. So it's great to put a well, face to a name. It's been an absolute yeah. pleasure. And thank you so much yes. for joining us here on Gale Force Winds. What another great conversation here on Gale Force Winds. A podcast sponsored by Everwind Fuels right here at the Energy NL Conference. Thanks very much. Nice to meet you. One of the leaders of Newfoundland and Labrador right here. Thanks, Jerry.